Yo, how are we doing guys? Welcome to a World to Live Online video. This is going to be my guide on the exclusion zone. Now, this is not going to be a guide on, you know, like where all the spots are to find all the best stuff. I will make videos on that uh, in the future. This is just on how to do the exclusion zone, like the best inventory setup, items you need, items you don't need, etc, etc. So check the timestamps in the description below so you can skip to a certain part of the video, you know, skip to the part that you want. And let's get on with the video. All right, so we're going to start off with the two basic items. Number one, the exclusion zone map. There'll be a link in the description to my guide on how to get the map. It is very, very easy. So go check that out. I think it's only like 30 seconds long or something. It's honestly it's super easy to get. Um, the second thing would be the NDP detector. Again, there'll be a link in the description to show you my guide on how to get that. This one is going to take um, a little bit of a little while to go get. It's not the hardest thing to do. Um, it's just it requires quite a bit of running around and a little bit of work. It's going to take you about an hour, I'd say. So yeah, there you there your main two things. Right. So on to the rest of the inventory. Now you're probably wondering why I've got medium med kits. That's the first thing I want to come up with because. Uh, yeah, it's suit like it's actually kind of an important thing. But the reason I go with medium med kits is there's nothing here to really kill you. Like it, it, there's a lot. Well, there's a lot to kill you, but most things that are going to kill you are going to just instantly kill you. There's nothing you can do about it. So I go with the medium med kit just so I can get my health up. Like if I die and respawn, I can get my health up just a little bit. So it's not set. You know, it's not set. At it's 1 HP, because you don't want to be running around at 1 HP, you know, if you notice, your gas gas mask might go by accident and you've not noticed, take a bit of radiation damage, at least you've got a little bit of health if you've got medium med kits. Honestly, you don't even need to bring med kits here, but I would recommend just bringing a few. So, what I do if I die and respawn, I'll use one medium med kit. So, I can take twice as many medium med kits over the large med kits, that's why I bring them. There's stuff like electric balls and stuff that'll hit you for like 100 to 200 damage. So, medium med kit works out about perfect, to be fair. And it's going to save you a lot of money, and you can bring a lot more, so... Yeah. Number two, ciders. You can't buy... There is a shop here, but you can't buy ciders here. You're going to need a lot of them. I, as you can see, I've got 59 on me currently. I did a run earlier with 50. Went pretty good, but I run out... At the end, like on my way back, and then it ended up taking me like 30 minutes to get out of this place because I was all the way at the other side of the map. So yeah, get some ciders, get a lot of them. You're gonna need them. Um, number three, anti reds. You don't need a lot of them. I've got 40. Literally weighs one kilogram. That's it. I'm not gonna take any more than that. These are just for in case my gas mask breaks or you know runs out or something like that. They're literally emergency. They weigh next to nothing. They're definitely worth taking. Number four, firewood, 100%, bring some. Um, but we're going to make some campfires. You're going to want campfires. There's a lot of areas where there's a good chance you're going to die. Get rid of that one. Um, let's go for an example. All right, over here, there's uh, some stuff that you want to pick up. You've got to jump over rocks. If you touch the water, even for a millisecond, you're dead. Um, if you want to cross this part here, Touch the water, you're dead. You know, there's a lot uh, a lot of areas where you're going to want a campfire. So, definitely bring some campfires. They're going to help you out loads. Just for getting over them areas where you think, oh crap, like, I don't know if I'm going to survive this. Next, um, as you can see, I've got night vision goggles. All right, you're not really going to need them. You only need night vision goggles if you're going into the maze. Um, I'll be doing a video on that soon. It... it Probably be a couple of days or something that'll come up. So um, when it comes up, I'll put it in the description. So check the description. If it's there, awesome. If not, um, you know, just get a couple of days. Probably come back, check again. Will, like I will make a guide on that. I just need to get around to doing it. Um, weapon NV slash one, the very beginning knife that you get. You can't carry any other weapons in this game. It's the like in this in this area. So, what's going to happen if you bring any weapon apart from that, is when you go past this gate here, you're going to die. Do not bring any weapon apart from that. If you do bring one by accident, make sure you go to the fish, uh, Taihan, 
Talk to him. Get a storage. Put your weapons in there. Uh, the next item is the sapper shovel. The reason is digging. You can buy the sapper shovel. Sap, sapper shovel from this guy. Show me your goods. It's right here. It's 500. It's next to nothing. Next item I've got is the monocular. It's basically the binoculars. <laughs> um, reason I bring these is like when you get to again. Like these rivers or something, instead of going like risking your life by jumping on onto the rocks, um, because you're going for an artifact that you know, like you know, one spawns somewhere, you can just use this to have a little bit of a zoom in, have a little bit of a look. This isn't a needed item; it's a recommended item. It's not a needed item. It's they're not expensive. I think it's like two k or something. So, I'd say if you can get one, get one. Like it's not gonna break your bank. Um, a gas mask filter. Obviously, you're going to want a backup when your gas mask breaks. I personally have my gas mask on the entire time when I'm in there. You don't need it on the entire time. But I do recommend it because if something does go wrong, like you go over a highly ra radiated area and you don't know, you're going to die. So me personally, I just prefer to keep it on. Final item, the nuts. Again, you can buy them from this guy here. They're super cheap. They're super light. I've got 500, only weighing 2.5 kilogram. They are super light, super cheap. Total base price, $49.99. That's for 500. Obviously, I paid more than that. Um, let's have a look how much you pay for them. It's not a lot. Show me your goods. Go to the nut. I paid 250 for 500. You're going to need them. Buy them. Buy a lot of them. You need them. 100%. Just buy them. Buy them. Stop thinking about it and just buy them. Listen, trust me. Just, just buy them. All right? Buy them. Buy a lot of them. Um, you'll understand why. I'll show you why. Now, definitely bring some, uh, as you can see at the top left, I've got artifact containers. If you want to buy some art artifact containers, you want to go to the original map. You're going to come up to uh, I4. Wait, is it I4? Nope, it's not. I'm miles off. G7 slash 2 and the Roman, well, G2, it's G7 slash 3 and the Roman trader is right here. That's who you buy them off. I personally recommend bringing... Anywhere between five to ten small containers. The absolute minimum I'd say is bring five. The absolute maximum I'd say is bring ten. Depending on what character you've got, depending on how much inventory space you've got. But yeah, five to ten. Large ones. Bring two at the max. You're not gonna need more more than two. The medium ones, I don't have any on me right now. But medium ones. Two to three. Like, with the medium and the large, you want one at minimum. You want three at the absolute max. Like, for me, for my character that doesn't have any extra spaces, I'd bring five mediums. Uh, five smalls. Maybe six smalls. And then, like, two large and two mediums. I think that's going to be my default from now on. Like, six smalls, two mediums, two large. Yeah, something, something like that. You know, obviously, as you're looking around the place, you're finding stuff. You're going to know what you're going to need to bring to go and find them items. So, yeah, that's the advice I can give anyone. You see this guy here, I, d I don't know what he's doing. Um, he's wearing all his armor. Like, I know his chest piece weighs eight. What? You don't need armor. <laughs> Bank your armor. Bring extra med kits. Bring extra ciders. That was like the perfect timing for him to come along. I was literally just about to start talking about armor. Don't wear any armor. You don't need it. It's not going to help you in the slightest bit. It's just, it's literally just going to weigh you down. It's, it's not helpful. Thank it. You don't need it. So yeah, that's uh, that's the inventory. So I'm going to show you a couple of things about the exclusion zone, like you know places where you can die and stuff like that, and how it kind of works. So let's get on to the next part of the video. Alright, so on to the digging. This is going to be part two of this video. So, as you can see, I've got my NDP detector. I do have it turned on, as you can see here. It's got 78.3% battery left. I'm going to put my shovel in my hands uh, because I've just found a spot here. So this is what it's going to sound like if you have it turned on the entire time. When you come over some stones or if you're lucky crystals, this is what it's going to sound like. Now, how this works, let me just turn this off a minute. 
So how this works is you want to get it to its highest pitch sound and then you want to use left click for digging. Now the digging is very random as in you can dig once and get everything from the spot or you can dig a hundred times and still not have anything from the spot. But you can keep digging over and over and over and over. You will get something until that sound goes. It just So just if the sound's going and you don't get bored, keep going. Um, I've had issues with digging before where I've dug over and over and over and like for 10 minutes and not got anything and I was like screw this spot I'm never <laughs> it was just driving me insane it's completely random there's no specific spawns for this so yeah so we're gonna find the highest pitch as you can see that's going down so let's go back to let's say about here it's going down and we want to dig here. And I am dying to radiation because I forgot to turn my mask on. See, it happens, people forget. That's why you bring the radiation pills. Just double checking then, making sure I was in the right spot. Pretty sure this is the right spot. There we go, small NDP stone and a medium NDP stone. See, it's completely random. Sometimes you can dig once and get it all. Sometimes you have to dig 10 times. So that actually worked out pretty good, make it like, because I had to dig for a little bit, so it shows you that sometimes it can take a while. So uh, yeah, that's how the NDP detector works, that's how the digging works, that's how you get the stones and the crystals. If you're really lucky, you'll get a large crystal, instant 10k, or use it for the batteries, or use it for, I think someone told me you can use it for clans. I'm not in a clan, so I don't know. But yeah, that's how it, uh, that's how... The digging part works so on to the next part staying safe all right so here is one of the rivers that i was talking about this is the one just north of the uh the entrance to the exclusion zone we're going to try and dodge that now i can tell you that that spawns up here which is going to do the heat damage if you walk into it and there's also going to be a tornado so you're going to need the nuts to um, hit the tornado if you didn't know that yeah throw nuts at tornado and it'll go away don't be too close to it when you do it though, or the, uh... Yeah, it'll still hit you. Oh, I missed that one. Try and throw a head. There we go. Now we don't need to worry about that for a minute. So, as you can see with the water... If you step in this, you are dead. Instantly. The second your foot touches it, you are dead. So you really... You know, this is why we bring the campfires, okay? Um, I've just run in a cobweb, it's fine. So this is a great example of me showing you the binoculars and the campfire. So I know there's one that spawns over there that you might not be able to see. So I'm not gonna use a campfire here because I don't feel like I'm gonna die. I know there's an artifact that spawns there, but it's not there. I don't know if you'd be able to see it at this range, because I know you have to be so close for stuff to spawn in. But that's why I bring these, just gives me a little bit better of a view. Jump over here. So, I'm going to show you the campfires, why you should be bringing them. Obviously, you know why. If you die, you don't want to be running back. Um, I know another artifact spawns over there. Can't see one. Where are you going? But yeah, some of these difficult, some of these rivers are much harder to pass. So if you're 
you've run all the way, you know, like down here or something, and you want to cross this. This one's kind of difficult to get over, actually. So you've run all the way down there. You don't want to die and then have to run all the way down again, do you? You know what I mean? You're not going to want to do that over and over. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So obviously, before you start jumping over, you just get to where you're going to start. Get your campfire. Place that down. Now you know if you die, you're going to respawn there for like the next minute. So then you've got like a minute where you think, all right, I know if I die, I'm going to respawn there. Go over. If you mess oh. up, see, the second I touch that water, dead. The absolute second. There's no way of thinking, oh, if I'm full HP, I won't die that quick. No, you will instantly die. You always instantly die. Right, I'm gonna have to wait here for a couple of seconds, but yeah, that's um, why we're bringing the campfires, why we're bringing the uh, binoculars, and yeah, don't touch the water. <laughs> like whatever you do, don't touch the water. Oh. Yeah, don't do that. That was a mistake. I actually I hit spacebar, but my character doesn't jump. I think I hit it too early. <laughs> that was that was a legit mistake. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it in the video though. <laughs> Can't believe I just did that. Oh fuck me. All right, so here's the final part of the video. This is going to be the invisible anomalies. As you can see, I'm throwing nuts at literally nothing. It's an invisible wall. Um, I, I run into it earlier and died. This is why I was still learning the exclusions on myself. And this is why you need to bring the nuts. Because if you run into these, you insta die. And you can't see them. You don't know where they are. I'm not entirely a hundred percent on figuring out where these are yet i know sometimes you can hear them sometimes there's like a, a red or brown mark on the floor that will like disappear as you get closer i i'm 90 percent sure that's intentional um but yeah whenever you die to one of these they, they're not scattered everywhere so don't think oh, i'm just gonna die to that every like every 10 seconds they're only in certain locations so don't like make just mark them whenever you die get on your map right click add marker and just add a, add a red skull that's what i do and just mark them like i said they're not everywhere they're only limited locations so that's the invisible anomalies and this is how you counter them you just throw nuts so you know where they are so you could even just run around like if you bought like two thousand nuts is that still not that heavy and you could just constantly throw nuts and then you'd never die to them you just literally constantly throw them. It cost you 1k, be like 4 kilogram, and then you'd never die to them because you're just constantly throwing them. But yeah, that's that's how you figure out where the invisible anomalies are. So there it is, guys. There is my beginner's guide to the exclusion zone. I hope this video helped. If it did, please give the video a like. I would very much appreciate it. Subscribe for future videos on World to Live Online. Drop a comment on anything that you want to ask, anything that you need to know, any you know suggestions for a video that you think oh, I could do with that information. Um, there'll be some future videos coming out soon for the Exclusion Zone 1, 2 and 3 quests. Well, 2 and 3, 1's really easy, you just go talk to the guy. But yeah, for the Exclusion Zones 2, 3, oh and there's a 4th one, isn't there? Yeah, so 2, 3 and 4. Um, make sure to check the description below for my uh, Discord link. I'm just starting to like redo the entire thing. Added some new rooms, added roles for certain games. Um, doing some other stuff in there. It's coming out pretty well. I'm enjoying it. And also, you know, you can always jump in game with us, jump in the voice chats and stuff like that. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.